getting ahead around things here on the homestead plenty so buy myself a little bit of time and freedom to go and uh, take my boat out and go camping and uh, do some hunting while I'm out there. We've got about 10 more days of season left where a guy can get out and uh, hunt certain animals and that's going to be over and then there's going to be a dead period where it's just going to be fishing from there on so this is my chance to go out and uh, come back with some meat. Packing this stuff up and getting ready coming over here it was super hot and man that's changing quick the wind's kicking up the storm's kind of blowing in it happens just that quick in here in Alaska. We've got blue skies over here we got a storm and a squall blowing in over here so time to time to hustle it won't be long before all these animals are out of season so this is kind of my big last go to be able to put up some red meat this is the time of year where you just got to get out there and seize the opportunity myself this time or I can go out tonight and I ain't gonna let no little weather get in my way. There's a lot of areas that I'd like to get into and check out and go hunting in that I can access with my boat. But if I bring the canoe that really opens up the opportunities and opens up the country for me. Sometimes to get further back in and get to the best hunting you gotta bring the canoe. I've never brought the canoe in my boat so I'm kind of looking forward to this as a new method. Ain't bringing no dogs with me on this trip. It's kind of a shame. I love to bring a dog with me, but this trip is all about hunting. I'm going back there with the antenna, coming home with some reward. There is no way, a hundred years from now, that somebody can come through here and not find a piece of my soul. get these last few cabinets in. I think this is going to be a really cool project. My whole plan for Kavik, um, rolling through the changes, worked here for a lot of years, purchased the camp. I had to make some safety decisions and changes first, the electric, the fuel. Now we're getting cosmetics. I'm going to redo my whole kitchen. This kitchen here, been here the entire almost 20 years I've been here, 20 years before that too. It's tired, it's sad, it's time. It's a process of gutting the old and putting in the new. I love to use and reuse. I'm a big fan of repurposing. The only repurposing this is going to get is to help me roast marshmallows. The minute I touch anything up here, I'm not going to be able to cook for anybody. I'm not going to be able to service the clients from this kitchen until it's done. thing with my cabinets. I got oak cabinets. I want to get my stain going first. I don't have stain. I don't have a store to go get stain at. I'm going to go out to the tundra and I'm going to get supplies. You've got decomposing twigs, tundra, detrius. That's all the peat is. Decomposition of the tundra creates a product called tannins and that I can use as a stain for the cabinetry. This is what I'm after. Um, it's brown, brown, brown. I'm not going to add water. I'm going to add vinegar. Vinegar will change the acidity of it and draw out the tannins in a way differently than the water will. I've got enough material from here. Go back, crush it all up, take some of the excess water off, and then add the vinegar and it'll start that process of leaching the pigment. So this is gonna go in and on top of all this loveliness. So you're really just making a nice slurry, but 
Even now, look at the color draining out. You're starting to get it. It's a nice, earthy brown. And that's what I want. Other than what Mother Nature has to do, the job here is done. I'm gonna leach that color and throw it on the wood. When you catch something, it kind of feeds everything. Your family, your puppies, the birds. You won't feel like you're wasting anything out here. Oh, it's a nice day. It is a nice day. It's a nice day for green picking. You guys taking the boat then right off the bat? Yep. Real low tide, so we're just going to pretty much go across on the sandbar and we're going to go check if the greens are good. Oh, okay. There should be fireweed, onions, sour docks, rhubarbs. For the hailstones, taking advantage of the changing seasons is key to their survival in northwest Alaska. This time of year, the thawing landscape in Kiwalik presents the brief opportunity to harvest fresh greens, a vital addition to their diet. The great changeover is having these fresh greens, so I'm going to go out there with Ting Mac and Kutin. And Ting, of course, knows how to pick and which ones to pick, but Kutin is still learning, so it's important for Kutin to follow along. See you guys later. Yeah, we'll see you in a while. Have fun! It's real important for us to pick and eat the greens, especially when we have our long cold winter. It's nice to have something sweet besides all the meats and fish we have. So we balance it out with the berries and the greens, not missing anything from our diet. It's hard work. It's backbreaking, but um, in the end, it pays off.
my son Skyler and my daughter Scarlett, they're at the age where they can get out and move around pretty easily in the woods. So I'm going to get them in the woods and teach them some things that I was taught growing up. Okay, I'm going to reverse this trailer up underneath this boat and try to slide this trailer all the way on as far as I can. Once that's done, I'll try to use a winch and winch it the rest of the way on. I got a thing safe. Put the sweater on because I don't know how strong that rope is to the winch. If that rope breaks, I don't want to get slapped too hard. Pretty sure that's how it works for a bowline knot. This is the most sturdiest winch. This isn't gonna work with this rope. I could try my bow rope. This is probably a stronger rope here. Hopefully I can work with this boat rope. Yeah, maybe that'll work. of remodeling her kitchen after years of wear and tear. But she must complete the work before she can open her business and service incoming clients or risk losing crucial revenue. This is quite possibly a large project to have bitten off. But it won't stop me from completing it. I have to get my sink out. I can get my faucets out. Because I'd like to save those. I'm gonna break that seal. It's like super glue. the job done. Kavik is a living, breathing entity to me that wants to be a happy little cubby, that wants to provide a good service, that wants to be done the right way. Why do something halfway when you can do it right? So I'm trying to get it done. 
I love coming down river. Every mile you get down river, it just gets wilder and wilder. Been traveling roughly about 14, 15 miles down river, coming up here pretty close to the area that I'm going to. Weather's uh, opened up here for a little bit. We still got some dark clouds coming again. Looks like it's just gonna be one of those mixed days of sunshine and rain. There should be a trail coming up here that goes back to the lake on the lower end. In Ninana, Jesse has taken advantage of the newly thawed waterways to travel to a nearby lake. There he will hunt for beaver, a key source of meat and fat that will sustain him for weeks. It's gonna be really exciting for me to go get out on this lake that I spent so much time crossing in the winter. I've seen some really good signs of some beaver houses, and I feel like if I can get back there, I'm gonna put myself in some prime hunting grounds in the prime time of the evening. All right, loading up my 22, got my shotgun loaded up, got everything in my canoe that I'm gonna to need to be out there hunting for the evening. Just gotta drag my canoe back through this portage and uh, get in the lake and go see what I can find. Hunting beaver has its challenges and that makes me excited right there, you know? The uncertainty of it. I'm looking forward to getting back there in the lake and seeing what I can see back there. All right, looks like I got a little slough here. If I follow this slough, it should take me right into the lake. I just gotta make it through this grass here and then I'll end up in the deeper water of the lake. I can see it right up ahead of me. Over there on the bank, I can see a lot of beaver sign. You can see where they've been chewing down on these birch trees right over here. So, uh, already looking good, looking real good. I'm seeing some promising signs. I'm seeing a lot of worn in beaver trails up the banks. Beaver is a very aggressive animal about maintaining its territory, so that tells me that there's an active beaver around here. It's raining again, but hopefully it doesn't get too bad. Didn't bring my rain jacket out with me. I'm pretty far away from camp now, so going back there to get under a tarp doesn't make sense getting soaking wet and miserable. The rain's really picking up. Thunder coming in. Wow, this could be uh, quite the rainstorm. The rain's really picking up. Thunder coming in. Wow, this could be uh, quite the rainstorm getting soaking wet and miserable and it's raining so hard right now I'm just gonna duck under a canopy of this nice spruce tree right here. It's pouring out there. I'm just gonna wait the storm out. No use getting soaking wet. storm's gonna roll in. The weather's already changed three times today, but the sun's out now, time to get hunting. Right up here, there's these two beaver houses. One of them looks like it's quite old, the one with all the green grass growing on it. That doesn't look like a fresh house with anything actively living in it. The other one looks like it more than likely is active, so that's a good sign. I'm just gonna be quiet and drift around and Hope they start coming out. They ain't a very sneaky stealth animal. They got work to do. They ain't gonna stop their work just because I'm here and they don't really travel too far away from their houses. So sometimes the best hunting method is just to sit back and wait. Be quiet, let things come to you. Super nice to be out here canoeing. Super quiet way, getting around, no motor. It's a nice break away from the boat and the fast pace. It's uh, something that I've done a lot of ever since I've been in Alaska. It's really therapeutic just to 
travel around so silently and be able to get back to places you'd never be able to get back to otherwise. shot. I probably spooked him by taking that shot too early. Just gotta hope that it comes back out or another one does. Damn, that was stupid. It's a little bit of a bummer. I wish I had had a little bit more patience. Just gonna have to let things quiet down and hope it comes back out. Big animals and weather is the two things that can kill you quickest out here. You gotta be prepared. I got some good help now. Little guys, but they do a lot. For Rico, passing down native Athabascan knowledge to his children is a responsibility and a way of life. With his kids Skylar and Scarlet arriving from outside of Fairbanks, Rico will take them on a journey and teach them new skills for the wild. I like going out in the woods. You know, it's kind of scary. It is. Huh? Yeah, you gotta watch out for bears out here. How do you not get that scared in the woods? Well, you gotta know what to look for. You gotta know what to avoid. You gotta know what you're going for. You gotta know what you might be going for. You gotta be tougher in the woods. There's a place up here I want to show you guys where to get birch funk. Do you know what birch funk is? No. It's a natural fungus that grows on birch trees, and if you burn it, it keeps uh, mosquitoes from hanging out. And they they kind of leave you alone. If you they like about mosquitoes and kill <laughs> Okay, you guys ready to get some birch funk? Okay. It's a little wet out here, right? So you gotta have some rain gear on. Okay, what we're gonna look for is kind of like dead birch. I'll show you. See, it's like this. There's birch funk right here. See that? Yeah, that'll work. Here, I'll get you a little stick. You can knock it off, okay? Oh, you got it. Look, Scarlet. When you see a tree that's not alive, see how it's dead, no top? That's the ones the fungus grows on. That's what you gotta look for, look. Yes! You did it, Scarlet. Oh, I'm gonna nice. chub a chub one. It's a good one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> chub a chub. Look at this, Skylar. Scarlet, look. Whoa! Grizzly bear. That's a grizzly bear one? Yeah, you see his hair, look. There's hair. See where he bit it? This is teeth marks. If he's doing this, he lives. There. This is his spot. So just think of that when you're out here in the woods. Which way the wind is blowing? Because you gotta be careful, okay? Let's uh, gather a few more, but let's not hang out here too long. My kids, they think of me with the utmost respect. It's just like I'm the toughest guy in the world, and I'd hate to lose that respect. I want to spoil them, but I also want to teach them. Getting them out of here like this is like living in the woods 101. It's basically getting in the field and teaching them hands-on, and they'll learn a lot coming out like this. 
This bag is heavy. You ready to get back on the river? Yeah. You guys had fun? Yeah. Great day today, great start. We got out here, there was a lot of bird fun. The kids had a lot of fun, they learned a lot about it. We're gonna keep moving, hopefully get up to the cabin tonight. Good job, you guys did real good. You have like an eagle eye for bird punk. I don't know if I don't try. And this year's teacher, yeah, I better try all avenues as they come up. It took me quite a while to get uh, all the cabinetry cleared, the flooring out. I want to get on staining the cabinets. That's my next big challenge. I'm going to start bringing out some of the cabinets. Sue is remodeling her kitchen to better serve her clients. After creating a natural stain from the tundra, Sue must apply it before she can install the new cabinets. But every moment without a functional kitchen may cost her key revenue. I got my stain here. What I'm hoping to achieve is sort of a dark gray color. You will see a lot of variation in the amount of stain because the way this works, it's going to take the natural tannins in the wood and bring it out. If I go to the beach and lay out for a tan, and a redhead goes out and lays out for a tan, we're going to tan at a different rate. No different with the trees. I don't mind. I celebrate the diversity in products. Yeah, I haven't made this particular stain before. I've made other stains. I make paints. You're doing much the same process. You're leaching something out of the plants to get a tincture or a color. By using my elements around me, I created something pretty cool. Everything is looking pretty good. I'm really proud of how this turned out. You never know how something's going to go until you do it, but you can't be afraid to do it. It's now time to get the kitchen back to what it needs to be, which is functional. the time because it's not that important you have 24 hour sun you wake up anytime go to sleep anytime it's pretty nice <laughs> today i'm gonna make an outhouse the ground over here is thawed out enough that i can actually put a hole in the ground you know this was all frozen and now it's blooming but um you know we have to keep sanitation under control we don't want to get sick you know, you got to be downriver from where we get our water, where we stay, where we clean. And the outhouse we had back there in the bushes got crushed in the ice. And you got to have a place to keep the mosquitoes off your ass. That's really how it works. Carefully take the the, um, the, the soil, pile it over here to the side. I'm going to leave you to do this while I go get more plywood, okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm digging out my dad's, uh, the hole he want me to dig for the outhouse. <laughs> This is mm, not my first time helping my dad make the outhouse. I guess this one is going to have a pretty good view. <laughs> That's be fun around here actually. So much time helping my parents. Helping my dad is my favorite because that's where I learn how to build stuff. I'm going to dig as deep as I can to get to the permafrost. Is now melting. This is permafrost. The throne. Ugh. Is it gonna fit or is it gonna sink in there? We're about to no. Because all the way down to the permafrost. You gotta dig a new hole. I'm kidding. I live with five women, so they want to have a bathroom where it's nice and private. The outhouse also will let any predator, like a bear or wolves, when they're coming along the river, because they follow the rivers and eat the dead fish, they'll be coming along the river here and they'll smell this. That's the way nature tells each other who you are, what you are, and where your territory is. We've never had a bear here in camp. Now get that long stick over there. You see how it's got a straight edge to it? And it's flat? Mm -hmm. It's a good way to measure. So if you put that on the two-foot mark I just made, and you take it right to that corner up there, yonder. 
This is going to be the side. The side, yeah. Hang it down. This is Arctic Tundra Carpentry 1. Not even 101. Just set it up on top of the toilet. We don't want to have the chainsaw bite in the ground. A lot of things are here divided by sex. My wife does certain things. I do other things simply because I'm a man and it's what's expected of me. It's very clear. There's no blurring of the lines. And yet, there's also places where we intermingle, you know, where, where one does whoever's better at what. And these girls, I want them to see what it is I do. Now I want them to see what it is their mom does. I want them to know as much as possible. And then what information they use or don't use is up to them later in life. We're going to stake it down. What I need you to do is go get me a couple poles. And I'll make stakes. I need the, the back, the back hammered axe. Thank you, dear. be our door my 16 year old carol she was over here helping me she does a lot of work she's uh, really crafty and she likes to build stuff she helps me a lot with other things i'm doing she's a very curious person and easy to teach and she likes to do hands-on stuff we're gonna miss but all right rotate it this way we started during the day building our own house and it's still during the day i guess sun didn't go down and it won't go down around here it's 24 hour sun a lot of mosquitoes out, especially when we were building. <sighs> I don't really like mosquitoes. I'm so glad we built an outhouse with a mosquito net. Just let me make sure I get it tied down so a big wind don't come up and get it. I don't find it comfortable to have to go use the bathroom outside and have all the bugs all over us. So for the next couple months, the outhouse will serve as well. And then when it's uh, time to leave, we'll put it on our cash. And next year, when it's time to use the outhouse again, there it'll be. It's part of living up here. Well. I don't think we really need to test it to make sure it works good. So we'll call it good, okay? Yep. Let's get these tools and go have ourselves something to eat. Basically, just a uh, shelter cabin. You guys ready to check out the cabin? You gotta be quiet and try to look around a little bit because we haven't been here in like a year and we want to make sure it's safe here. Look at this right here, kids. Look. Whoa. See that? Bear claws? Nope. Uh, scratches? Bites? Anything? Bites. That's where a bear was chewing on this. You see where it was digging down there? Dang. So there is bears around here. So we gotta be real careful, okay? Mm hmm. Let's go check the cabin, okay? Okay. Stay close to me. Look around. 
You know which way the wind is blowing. Guess which way it'll go if it's around here. We stopped here at the hill cabin. There is a sign of bears. It's another month till the berries are out, so they're real hungry. I gotta keep a close eye on my kids. I don't want them running off where I can't see them because that's an opportunity for a bear. Okay, it looks good. I don't see any trash or anything getting drug around out here, so let's check out the inside, all right? Okay. Everything is good. Cozy little spot. Okay, you guys ready to do some fishing? Yeah. Okay, let's go get the fishing rods. You gotta train your eyes to see things quick, or otherwise you miss your opportunity. I saw a beaver and I was proceeding after him, but I got kind of excited and I went for it. I shot at him and uh, he went under the water, so definitely didn't get that shot. It was a good sign seeing a beaver until I scared it off. Might have messed up my opportunity right there. Now I just got to see what happens, see if another one will come out or if he'll come out. But I'm starting to run out of time. It's starting to get pretty late in the 11th hour. This is kind of the point where you keep your hopes up on your animal karma, your hunting karma. If it's not meant to be, then I won't catch nothing. There he is. see him again swimming down the slough, so I'm just gonna stay here and hopefully he'll come in. Beaver hunting's tricky. You gotta get the shot, and then you gotta get it out of the water before it sinks. If I shoot it and it sinks, I ain't getting it from down on the bottom of the water. sink to the bottom. There he is, there he is. I got him. Right there on that bank. I need to get over here and retrieve him. It's a big beaver. It's a lot of mills in that beaver right there. Whoa, broke the net. beaver that was an intense hunt for a minute i didn't think i was going to get that beaver i'm just thankful to have this animal it's a really big beaver but that's a good uh, 40 pounds of meat that's going to be such good eating for me it's getting late so i'm going to head back to camp once i get there i'm going to process this up get a fire going cook myself a real nice meal This beaver eluded me all day, made me work hard for it. I appreciate that. I appreciate being out here on the land, working hard to get my meal, and I'm very thankful that I could come away successful. Oh, man, that's gonna be so good right there. The perfect way to cook some beaver. I'm gonna let it slow cook over the coals while I enjoy this beautiful view. Every time I come down this river, I learn something new, and I still feel like I can spend a lifetime here learning all this. 
that the river's got to teach me. This is a beautiful roast. Oh, wow, that is just perfect. Ah, oh, just falling apart. Mm. Doing this kind of stuff right here is what I dreamed about coming up here, and this is the way I wanted to live. It's what I romanticized. Reading novels about Alaska and mountain men and adventurers. Now I'm here. I'm that adventurer. I feel strongly connected to the land. I feel like I should never let go of that because that's what brought me up here, and that's who I am. Family is everything. I got to be there for my kids, and I got to teach them my lifestyle. Okay, you kids ready to fish? Yeah. Okay. Just going to head up river here. There's a few bends, and hopefully have some luck fishing at this little slough. Skyler has fished a little bit before in his life, but maybe only once or twice. Scarlet's still got to learn how to cast the uh, fishing rods. She's a little small yet, but hopefully she catches on. If I catch a fish, that's cool, but if they catch a fish, it's a lot cooler. There's a nice, nice school right here that's got some calm water. I just want to throw the anchor in, and hopefully those kids get a chance to catch something out here. Hold it with your thumb right here. Okay, now pull this back so that... Oh, I know how to do this. Yeah. You did this before. Okay, I'm going to get out of your way so don't catch me now, ball or nothing. Oh, you're a pro. Here, I'll let you start get used to it. I'm going to get your sisters ready, okay? Oh, I didn't catch anything. Keep casting, Sky. The important thing is you get the hang of it. There you go. Just your thumb. Yeah, and then throw it and then let it go. Oh, you got to let it go when you throw it. There you go. You did your first cast, Scar. You did it. No fish. Oh, beaver right there. Oh, yeah. That scared me. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> I can't see it. A beaver. Is it going to us? Yes. Yeah, he doesn't like us around here. Probably getting the wind on us. See him smelling. Mm, I got nothing bad again. Don't give up. I see it swirls every now and then. I mean, there's grayling out here. I'm having a hard time trying to catch fish. Yeah, we'll try a little more here. If we don't catch anything, maybe we'll have to wait till the water drops. This is the hardest time of the year to catch fish. My late mom taught me how to fish. One of the staple game foods that we eat out here is fish. And it's only right that I teach my kids how to hunt and how to fish because as Athabascan people, I believe I have a job and that duty is to teach my kids to survive like my parents taught me how to survive, how their parents taught them to survive. Our people carried on a torch of survival and it's important that I continue to carry that torch and hopefully one day they do it too. So. Keep the tradition alive, keep the culture alive, and that's what kept our people alive. We didn't catch no fish, but that's okay. At least this is preparing you for when the water is low and the chances are high. We won on that part. High five. Good job, Scarlet. Come on, you gotta do better. you gotta do better than that. Good job. I've got a squirrel personality. Everything catches my eye. Are you gonna fall? Don't be a bitch. Mama don't need that. It has to be flush all the way up to the ceiling. Let's see if this will... It's actually pretty good. Took a little tundra genuity, but it's done. 
So I'm gonna get another upper and start going that way. I mean, it is a big job for one person, but uh, one person is all I am. Kavik is population one, not 100. I'll get it done. <laughs> Nothing is flush in the Arctic. You gotta be willing to live with a little bit of imperfection. It's tight here. It's not here, but it's tight there. So you've you got some wibble in your wobble, but uh, it's coming together. People seem to really like uniformity. They, they understand when everything's the same. Part of me living out here is because I'm very far from the same from everyone else. That variation is the beauty I'm looking for. It's not perfect. It's unique just like me. Hopefully it fits, but I may have to adjust some more. So now, I'll just screw it in from the bottom and dial it in. Get the faucets back on and hook those up. This has been a much larger build than even I anticipated. The project starts overtaking you sometimes. The kitchen was a 1968 kitchen and showed it. I now have something a little bit more up to date. Being able to put my tundra stamp on it, my color scheme on it. I love wood, I love trees, I love the earth tones. Lighting the fire on the old kitchen. That's definitely a good feeling. It means I'm back in business. I feel damn proud of myself. There is no way a hundred years from now that somebody can come through here and not find a piece of my soul. Hello, xin chào các bạn nha. Đây là cây nhót nhà mình ạ. Đấy. Cây rất là to. Nó làm rất là rộng rồi các bạn ạ. Cái này phải bên Tết mới có quả các bạn nhá. Bên Tết là có quả ăn được. Tết là ăn cút non đấy ạ. các bạn hay thường ăn quất nhốt non quận với cả lá lá rau cải ấy. rồi chấm cái nước chấm của nó ăn rất là ngon nhà mình có hai cây nhưng mà nó lan rộng tận ra đằng kia các bạn ạ năm nay là năm thứ ba rồi hôm nay là nó rất là to lan rất là rộng ra quả thì sai lắm ạ Hầu như cành nào ngóc mép nào cũng có quả luôn 